uh, pretty cold out here this morning. It's in the mid 20s or so. I just wanted to show you where the physical ground loops are at of the, of the geothermal heat pump. It doesn't look like they're here, but it just looks like a normal snow covered garden. But uh, there's one loop here, there's one loop about here, and there's one loop over there somewhere. Even if the snow were melted, you still couldn't see them because they're, they're buried underground. They're 300 feet deep each. Each loop goes down 300 feet, comes back up again, and then it comes back up to about the five foot level underground, and they tie to each other. And the next one goes down and up, down and up. They're all in parallel, actually. So they all come in together, and they come into the house somewhere in here deep underground, they go right into the foundation wall and head over to the mechanical equipment. So it, even though it's really cold out here, it's uh, down in the ground, even like five feet underground, it's about, it's probably 50 degrees. And you get down real deep and it's probably a solid 55 degrees. And uh, that's all you need. There's a lot of heat in in all this earth at 55 degrees even and it can take that heat compress it extract it concentrate it and using just three loops i can heat a very large home this is our climate master tranquility 30 heat pump and it takes care of all of the heating and air conditioning for our entire home now people often ask me, how can you heat a house when the ground temperature is only 55 degrees? That, that doesn't sound very warm at all. And you're right, it's not room temperature, but it's pretty close. And it's much closer than what it is outside right now. It's in the, in the low 20s right now outside. And a couple days ago, it was actually negative, uh, close to zero degrees Fahrenheit outside. Now at first glance, a ground loop heat pump almost appears to violate the laws of physics because you're you're getting more energy out than what you put into it but that's just because your the extra energy is coming from the ground so in this case with our particular model of heat pump we put one unit of energy in and we get almost five units of energy out one unit of energy is provided by the electricity to run the pumps and things and the other four units comes from the heat of the earth, which is only 55 degrees, but when you compress something, it raises its temperature, and then you're able to run it through another heat exchanger, in this case, an air heat exchanger. So the air from the house blows across that now very warm uh, heat exchanger. It warms up the air, feeds it back into the house. The the refrigerant is now much cooler than it was before, so that's transferred to the ground loop fluid, which then goes back down to the ground to be warmed back up to 55 degrees. That works really well. And in the summertime, it just runs the opposite direction, and it cools the house and dumps the heat back to the ground. So in that sense, in the, in the wintertime, this robs heat from the earth, and in the summertime, it pays back the heat. Whenever it's running, it's creating, extracting heat and warming our house. But as a byproduct, uh, it also warms the hot water through these other two pipes here. And so underneath all this insulation, I just have some standard electric water heaters. This is a just a plain old 40 gallon water heater, electric water heater, and underneath this one is a plain old 50 gallon electric water heater. Now only this only this one is wired. It's the only powered one. This one over here is passive, meaning it's just a I'm just using it as a tank, holding tank. And um, I take I tapped off of it with a plumbing line that comes out up over and down and into the heat pump. And the heat pump takes that cold water that comes in from the city and it works on it and it makes it warmer just by a few degrees and cycles it back out back up the other side and then it goes down in 
here into the cold line in. So it taps back off and goes into the cold line. And then it comes back out again, cycles around, and it slowly gets warmed up. And uh, it has about, I think it's about 18,000 BTUs of heating capacity. So it's, it's not a lot of energy, but it's, it's essentially free energy. Because especially in the summertime, when the heat pump is cooling the house, heat is a waste product. And so before it sends it back into the ground, it actually uses some of that heat to heat our, our water for free. And in the winter time, it's not a waste product, but it just uses some of the extra heat to heat the water. So then, when our, when our normal water heater is running, our electric water heater, and when we use hot water, instead of water coming out of here, um, well, when the water comes out hot, instead of cold water going back into it, it takes preheated water out and feeds into the water heater. So you're always gonna have uh, hotter water going into the water heater and that makes the water heater not have to run nearly as often. So this water heater will hardly have to run today even though everyone will have to take showers and you know laundry and whatnot but it, it uh, greatly reduces the energy needs in heating your water uh, just because we're, kept, we're uh, capturing the extra heat from the ground. Uh, pretty neat system. Now here we're looking at a little data logger that I have running showing all the different temperature probes, uh, the ground loop temperatures. Uh, it's been running all night but it's still about 51 degrees right now. And, uh, and then you've got the hot water generator in and out. Um, we, there's a couple showers at least have been taken this morning and so the incoming water has been, it's been working on it for a while. And it's raised it to about 80, 80 degrees in and 81 out and it goes into a passive tank where the output of that tank is sitting at 104 degrees. Earlier today it was much higher but after after so many showers it's dropped down to about 104 and our regular water heater feeds off of that one so the water heater itself got an energy monitoring system here this is the TED up right now and as you can see after at least two showers I don't know who else has showered but uh, it only kicked on for about two three four maybe four minutes is all this orange spike here is the water heater turning on and you can see these red this red spike is the heat pump it cycles on and then off on off and that is just in stage one and we can go <clears throat> let's pull up a couple of days worth of data we'll show you just a little bit more data here um let's get it to load up here this ted is really good but it's sometimes kind of slow at loading so let's go back a couple days ago it was a really frigid cold day but it was extremely sunny and the day before if we go went back further you'd see the heat pump was in almost solid stage two, but it, it was cycling in and out of stage two. So it um, made a lot of hot water. In fact, the, the water coming out of the passive tank was hotter than our set point of the water heater. So our water heater never kicked on almost all day. And then, uh, as you can also see, by about 9.50 that morning, the heat pump stopped cycling because it was such a sunny day the the lighting the windows from our house let in so much light and heat the heat pump didn't have to run anymore our house actually raised four degrees higher than our set point so the set point was 70 degrees fahrenheit and it was almost 74 in here and that stayed that way it didn't get back down to about 70 until about almost seven o'clock that night and then it was really cold and frigid again, cycling into stage one and two. You can see the hot water heater turning on and off occasionally. But that whole day it only used about 1.8 kilowatt hours in electricity to heat all of our water. The next day we had some visitors and about everyone in the house took showers and we used a ton of hot water. So we quickly depleted through all of that passive tank and uh, 
which is fine. We used it, but it was free essentially. And then you can see the hot water heater kicking on a lot. Uh, just other things going on, showers and things. And uh, so then this night, it wasn't as cool. It was about, it was in the mid 20s last night. So it only stayed in stage one. Never once did it go into stage two. But here we are now. We've got a new tank of, of piping hot water made by the free energy of the ground. And uh, and then it's now there's one there's that one spike. And you can also see the yellow line by the way is the solar panels. They, whenever they kick on, that's what it looks like.